Okay, it looks like we are live. Perfect. Okay, so what we'll do, um, I can just see people joining now. Amazing. Um, thanks everyone for joining today. We are just, well, haven't even hit half past yet. It's slightly early. Um, we are going to give it a couple of minutes just to make sure we can get as many people in um, with us as possible, and then we will get started. Um, perfect. Okay. Oh, we've got loads of people flying through. Um, how is uh, the weather over there, Stefania? Uh, I'm in the Netherlands right now. Yeah, I have to say for that standard, it's not that bad. <laughs> keep it that way. <laughs> oh, in, in England, it's grey, very grey November. Yeah, it it's dry? raining. Sorry? Is it dry? No, yeah, it's dry, but... It's not necessarily, I don't think you'd want to go walking out there. It looks quite miserable. It looks like it's ah! probably going to, as always. <laughs> yeah, I have to say that this week uh, we were blessed because we had a kind of a tiny summer. It's like 15 yeah. degrees, 16 degrees. Oh, lovely. Wow, it's a miracle. That sounds amazing. It's my favorite weather, actually, is when it's really sunny outside, but cold and crisp. Go for a nice long walk. It should be good. Yeah, it's a good habit, especially in working from home. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Trying to leave the house. <laughs> um, hello, have you been working from home since March? Yeah. Yeah, same thing. Pretty much. I think we had a, a time, I think, between um, July and uh, September, where I start seeing the office once a week. <laughs> Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, and I was getting very excited and uh, yeah. Yeah, then uh, went back uh, went back to the home office. Yeah, I think I went to, yeah, I've been to the office once since February. So. Wow. I, I loved it. I, was, I just love being around my colleagues. It's, yeah. It's Rather than stuck in my little office yeah. slash bedroom that I've <laughs> set up here. <laughs> Um, right, okay, I think we've got a fair few people um, joining now, which is brilliant. I think what we'll do is we'll get started, and then if any more join, hopefully they'll be able to catch up with where we are and what we're doing. Um, so I will um, just do an introduction to myself, and then I will hand over to Stefania, and I'll give you a bit of information on her. Um, but first things first, thank you very much, everyone, for joining. Um, my name is Alice. I am the head of marketing at iQuant. Um, iQuant is an AI driven predictive eye tracking technology. Um, and what we have done, I think I've seen a few names on here that have joined quite a few of the others, um, but I've been running a webinar series. This is the first one we've done in a few weeks, um, but we're doing monthly webinar series now. And effectively what we want to do um, is if like myself and Stefania were just discussing there, if you're working from home, hopefully it is a nice opportunity for you to jump online get away from you know the core of the work and, and learn something new and maybe inspire you for the week ahead or any of your plans that you are doing and that's effectively all we're trying to do here um so we have a, a special speaker here so stefania um she is the cxo lead at greenhouse so greenhouse are an online specialist digital agency um they use a lot of data and insight um to be able to understand how and why people convert. And also she has a background in psychology. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to hand over to you, Stefania. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. Um, yeah, so this is the topic that we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about uh, getting to know your customer and how to do that with data. Um, very briefly, I will let me see if this works. Yeah. So I mentioned, yes, uh, uh, Alex just introduced me. I'll quickly um, give you a little bit more background. So yes, I'm Stefania. Um, I have a background in psychology indeed. I study uh, social organization of psychology um, in Italy. That's where I'm from. And I study uh, economic psychology and behavioral science uh, in Tilburg University in the Netherlands. Um, now I work at Greenhouse, I'm a CXO lead there, and uh, since 2013, I was working, I've been working at Greenhouse um, uh, in online marketing and in the conversion optimization industry, um, and I'm an expert in consumer behavior and behavioral sciences. Uh, I really have a strong focus on uh, uh, improving consumer experience so we can make the internet a better place. 
Um, so let me tell you very shortly about Greenhouse to give you a bit of context. Is a, is a brand and performance agency. Uh, we are about uh, more than 500 uh, people, 500 experts with a background in data, media, creative, and tech. Um, and in 2000, uh, we're based in Eindhoven, very important <laughs> to mention for those that are not from the Netherlands, because so Amsterdam is always the, the hot spot. Um, in 2019, we became part of Group M and WPP, which is one of the largest communication agencies worldwide. And to give you a, an idea, um, one out of three ads that, you, that are seen uh, uh, worldwide is placed by a Group M agency. So there's a lot of advertising going on there, but of, of course, also data. That's why we're here. Um, yeah, so how to get to know your customer, especially now that is a little bit uh, uncertain times it becomes harder and it becomes even more important, more than ever before. And what is that we see? I think mostly, uh, you know, uh, in March, uh, we have seen a lot of uh, uh, irrational behavior around us. Um, what we see is that people are really predict uh, uh, um, behave irrationally uh, in very obvious ways. Um, and of course, these things don't really make sense if you don't understand the consumer behavior and the cognitive biases. Um, because what you see is that uh, people are really reacting to their unconscious emotion in uh, such a predictable ways, and they're not responding to their to their uh, thoughts, you know, the rational thoughts. Uh, you know, like uh, for the fan of Kahneman, you know, uh, the system one and system two, people are much more on system one nowadays, which is the automatic pilot. Um, and becomes difficult to pay attention to the rational thought. Um, but yeah, when, whenever we see this kind of behavior, and here I just had a picture of uh, empty shelves. <laughs> I think more of us have seen that. Uh, yeah, the most, most, most important thing is to understand why, what it is and what is going on in people's minds uh, now that we're entering even in a second uh, wave and we have already entered actually. Um, so what is it? We, we, we have seen that uh, uh, this uh, empty supermarkets all of a sudden uh, was not a supply chain uh, problem. Uh, this is not really making sense, right? Uh, what, what people are going, have been going mad. Um, so this is a clear example of impulsive behavior. I have one more, I have another example online. This is one of our clients uh, that uh, sells coffee machines. And uh, this is a trend line. And what we have seen is that uh, we have noticed a peak in sales uh, in the Netherlands on the days where the pri uh, prime minister was having a press conference. Uh, so yeah, we, we had it like a joke uh, in the office, like, okay, just in case you're locked at home, just make sure you have the coffee. That's the most important thing. <laughs> um, another example uh, from one of our clients uh, that sells uh, lottery, um, tickets, what we see is that uh, uh, promoting online, uh, I say shopping, shopping, um, as easy as safe, it becomes very uh, effective. So, for example, um, we, when, when we here we have, uh, we have done run an experiment on social media. This is Facebook ad advertising. And uh, this is the default. It asks, uh, um, you want to take a chance, uh, get your um, uh, King's Day uh, ticket online. And for those who are not from the Netherlands, King's Day is a known uh, um, event in the Netherlands at the end of April. Uh, and there is a, a big tracking there for the lottery. Uh, so we have uh, experimented with another variation where we just mentioned that uh, uh, to, to buy the ticket online because it's easy as self to play. And that an impact on sales of 10%, significant. So this is another example how irrational behavior is nowadays. So yeah, now, now it's time to pivot. Uh, if you haven't done it before, obviously, uh, you really need to think big to transform your business. Uh, to match the new digital expectation of your customer. Um, we are entering a new area, era. Uh, uh, what has happened, you know, the consumer behavior you knew does no longer apply. We are entering a new stage uh, because the, the impact on consumer behavior is here to stay. Obviously, we have been through this a few months ago, 
um, we are entering in a second wave again. Uh, and the, 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 the impact that these uh, lockdowns has had on people was very profound. And, uh, and, and the big impact on how people are actually living um, it's really something to do not underestimate. And it was so massive um, that this change is going to stay at least for a few years to come. Um, so how can you adapt to this new uh, situation? Um, first thing is to move away from the conversion transactional optimization and really moving towards consumer experience. People need brands that trust you, that to trust. Uh, they need uh, they need to uh, feel the connection with the brand. It's not anymore about uh, you know click and data and conversion. Let's get someone in. You really need to uh, take care of your customer. And the second thing is really to understand the customer needs. Really pay attention to what people need and try to meet those needs. Um, so I have uh, two example of that of that uh, two cases. Um, the first one is about indeed the shift from conversion to consumer experience. Um, how did we that, uh, do that? I'll show you an example. Uh, but before uh, we do that, I'll tell you a little bit why why this is important. Um, yeah, what what you, what this data show is that people are more inclined to what's familiar to them. So seventy percent uh, assess that uh, uh, um, people are more inclined to uh, to stay. Um, around traditional venues, uh, about 70% of respondents have said that. And even more wants to go somewhere familiar instead of somewhere new. And yeah, these are quite uh, impressive numbers. It's, uh, it's not just a little trend, it's like a, a big statement. Um, and what that means is that if you're able to live up to the customer experience that, uh, that meets customer expectation, then they'll stay with you. Um, and that is something that is a big shift to before to the, where we were before. Um, um, but, Stefani, sorry yes. to interrupt you there. So yeah. what what so the reasoning behind or, or what you know what we perceive the reasoning behind to be around why people are now um, you know playing it safe, I suppose, is what, what this data is showing us. Um, what what would you say the reasoning behind that? that is in, in the links to the current climate? Why people are staying? Well, uh, I like everything in a few months, uh, everything around us has changed mm -hmm. and everything is new. And I th people really uh, need, have a, a emotional need to uh, stay around what is, uh, you know, the comfort zone, what's familiar. So if people have to go out, of course, now is a bit of risky times, you know, but if people have to go out, they rather go in the place that they know, a place where they can, that they can, they feel safe. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and there is a lot of psychology supporting that. Um, I, did, I have done my thesis uh, in that, uh, I call it the uh, field. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about what psychology says about this. So hopefully we'll give extra, let's say, uh, answer to your question. Um, yeah, what, 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 what does psychology says about this uh, trend? Well, when, when normality is violated uh, by, you know, new things going on, experience like uh, what we're going through, um, the inconsistency between the expectation and the reality trigger a very strong psychological reaction. And that is uh, uh, um, illustrated in the meaning maintenance uh, model. Um, and that is known in psychology. Um, and this uh, arousal, this reaction, uh, will trigger com compens compensatory behaviors to restore normality in anything that is possible. So to give you some example concretely, how can this impact the consumer behavior? Um, whenever something unexpected comes in, you need to restore normality. You want to have comfort around you. So what will you do as a human? <laughs> uh, um, you, you, know, you, you will fall a little bit more into system one and what you're more likely to do, you will have a tendency to go to what is familiar and can be trusted. So that's what we saw. Another thing you will do, uh, you will stick to your cultural background 
So in the uh, globally, you have a uh, two kind of culture um, dimension, uh, dimension, we call dimension, uh, individualism and collectivism. So in individualism is really uh, something very strong in the Western, uh, in the States, for example, is you, you are your own, you have your own identity, you need to have everything controlled. And the collectively, collectivism, on the other hand, is more uh, uh, common in uh, Asian cultures, where you really need your people to stay around you, that identifies your identity. And you have these two uh, sides of the spectrum. Um, whenever you go through a, 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 a meaning violation, it's called, you know, this unexpected uh, uh, event, um, you need to, you, you will become, if you're coming from individualistic culture, you will be more individualistic. And if you come from a collectivistic culture, you'll be more collectivistic. Um, and that can be seen uh, also in, uh, in, the, in the behavior, consumer behavior, shopping behavior. So for example, people that, uh, um, uh, for example, uh, are coming from uh, Western culture are more likely to spend more. They will, uh, so they will uh, channel into materialism, you know, get the things around me. Um, that's something uh, uh, that is uh, strong, strong there. Uh, but more importantly, that's something very funny. People will be more likely to uh, buy local products. Uh, so, for example, I'm from Italy, uh, one of the things you could predict is that whenever there's lockdown, I'm going to stock my house with pasta. <laughs> just in case, you know, <laughs> just make just to make sure, just in case, just to make sure um, I'm safe. Um, so people are more really need to uh, get things around it that are familiar. And that's um, like from a from like a comforting perspective as well. So they they kind of have that feeling of sec security and comfort. Yes. Yes. Interesting. Yes, yes. And this is really something unconscious. This reaction is really unconscious, uh, but it's very it's very big. Um, so, for example, uh, another example of a meaning violation uh, is what happens in 9-11, right? So, terroristic attacks. Uh, whenever there is something like this happening, people are reacting and shopping is one of the way people can restore normality around them uh, even more. Interesting. So, that is uh, some uh, psychology uh, literature right there. Um, but to uh, get back to, you know, the story, it's like, okay, people really need to have something familiar. Uh, but, but why, um, like, why, why is that important, even more important now to provide a, a good consumer experience? Well, it always been important now, even more. Um, yeah, what you see is that if people are having a good experience, a uh, uh, customer more likely to prefer your brand, they are more likely to trust your brand three times as much. 60% will say, 74% will spend more, and 75% will recommend you. So it does pay back as well for businesses. So you want people to, uh, uh, um, uh, of course, enjoy your experience. You need to live at their expectation, enjoy your experience, and they will stay. They will be more likely uh, to stay. So that has become, experience become more important than ever before. Um, so let me show you some examples, something concrete. Um, we have um, uh, been working with uh, one of our customers, Dela. Um, let me introduce you a little bit um, to Dela. Uh, they are uh, um, um, insurance company uh, for funeral. Um, so it's, uh, it's uh, also uh, very important to them to have a good uh, brand identity and uh, give a good experience. Um, so what we did with them, we have optimized their brand experience and also conversion rate for the new corporate identity. So for them, um, the, one of the more, um, how can I say, like uh, difficult questions to answer was, okay, we have a new brand identity how can we improve the brand experience without negatively impact the conversion rate of the advertising in this case? Um, well, on the left, what you see is a, a, a display advertising. Uh, this uh, banner it has been, um, it has been uh, optimized for eight years at least. 
So you can imagine it was like the top notch of what we had, the best we could uh, uh, um, traffic that had a high performance. Um, and then on the right side, you see uh, the new identity. Um, so our task here was really to test how can we uh, make sure we have a good brand, both a good brand experience and a good conversion rate. Um, so we've done some research. Um, we have done both qualitative and quantitative research. From a qualitative side, we, we used a usability research. Um, what, we, what we did there is to essentially show uh, these two versions of advertising and ask people what their preference was. And you see what we saw is that 79% of uh, uh, people had a, a preference for the design on the right hand side. So that's, uh, that's the one with the visual, the, the, the new corporate identity. identity. Um, that, was ex that was experienced as more prof uh, professional, clear, modern, that is exactly what Dela wanted. That was exactly their intent. Um, but when we have uh, moved to more quantitative methods like uh, experimentation or A-B testing, I was called, now, um, what we have seen is that we had a, a big decrease, significant decrease in uh, visits and in conversion rate. In, uh, and that, that was quite uh, big. So, okay, what we see is that despite the user preferences, their behavior shows something different. So we mm. went back to the drawing table and uh, we have uh, um, reworked some var uh, variations. And uh, what we see in, uh, we have used different best practices. So in the second uh, advertising uh, variation you see, you will find uh, uh, um, this uh, visual where we have um, implemented the Gutenberg diagram principle. So it's a UX principle where people are scanning the information from left to right in a bit of a Z uh, pattern, like a dot. So, um, so you see that what is, what is it that you are purchasing on the top, then you have the form, you have the logo and you have call to action. So that was the number one. Number two was the uh, uh, social proof. This was a, a, a persuasion principle that was very, very effective for this brand uh, based on previous optimization uh, roadmaps. And here what we did, we added the social proof on the bottom. So this was also one of the the best practice that came from the optimization from the all time winner um, ad. And the last one, we combined both. Um, so here you can see the Guten dia dia um, diagram principle together with social proof. And we have removed the visual for, um, let's say, extra clarity, because sometimes when you have too much going on, it becomes uh, too heavy to digest. Um, so that's what we did based on the scalable learnings of Dela. And what have we learned? What have we learned? <laughs> the less is more. Actually, this lesson is something that I, I have learned since I work in this field. Always less is more. Uh, so yeah, it's really about uh, uh, try to um, keep things easy to digest and clean. So then uh, um, that's often giving the best, uh, best performance. Um, it's very interesting you say that because from like an icon perspective and a lot of the customers we speak to so with icon you get a clarity score so you can actually quantifiably measure how clean and clear your design is um, and uh, a lot of our customers say the higher the clarity score so you know the more kind of white space that you give a design and, and less clutter uh, the better results they see in terms of performance for conversion yeah that is very key actually and also in marketing, in a, what you see, uh, I find that a little bit funny. Uh, marketeers tend to add more information, bring more. Yeah, they, they I don't know what you mean. Add, add, add. <laughs> then all the information are going to disappear because people don't know where to look. It's cognitive overload, isn't it? It's too yeah. much. They don't, they don't know where to look. What is, it, what is it that you want me to do next? What are you telling me? And normally, you know, that's when people will, will not either not click or if you're looking at it from a website perspective, they will bounce, they, they will click back and they'll try and find something else because, uh, yeah, it's just getting that um, kind of um, information hierarchy correct, getting the colours correct so people be able to clearly understand what it is exactly you're trying to tell them. 
Yeah, yeah, indeed. I couldn't agree more. So in doubt, <laughs> if you want to add anything, just just leave, uh, not leave it out, but put in the most important information. Mm. And icons can help a lot with that as well, of course. Yes, definitely. Okay, so this was the first case. We have one more to go. So when I was talking about how to adapt, I showed you what uh, how you can shift from conversion to consumer experience, how to measure consumer experience. And the second part is really understand your customer needs. So I'm going to show you a case on that with some background as well. Um, so why shall we understand your customer needs? Um, well, what we have seen is that during the lockdown, uh, especially the first one, uh, you see that fashion, home, consumer electronics categories have witnessed a very big shift in online purchase. Uh, this is especially for uh, uh, UK. These are data from a UK study from uh, uh, Google and Qatar. Um, yeah, and that happens while, well, of course, people had to restrict their movements and essential journeys, two essential journeys. Um, so this was a, this gives a little bit of background. You know, 86% of purchases in fashion were online. That's huge. That's a lot. Mm. Huh? And 67 of home garden category is a little bit less, still quite a lot. And then 73% for electronics. Uh, so yeah, you better move online. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, that's what this data say. So as a brand, Yes, go ahead. Just um, thinking, so this, uh, the changes that we've seen and, and we've said here that like UK is in the second second wave, so second lockdown at the moment. Um, this, I think one way we can look at it is, so the high street effectively is closed. So the only option they have is to shop online. And I've read um, a fair few kind of articles and opinions on this because I have a real fascination as to, so there's one side that's saying uh, this is kind of expedited um, consumer behavior. So it's brought it forward very quickly as to what people were predicting were going to be happening. Uh, much further down the line um do do we think um because they didn't have any choice these have got so these have gone up do we predict or you know your thoughts or feelings whether people will now uh, once lockdown has um been lifted and we have um you know less restrictions placed on us that we will then see these numbers come down um because people will be shopping in the high street more or do we think it will still it will come down but still be a lot higher than before covid hit yeah, I, th I think uh, I think like what this data shows is that people are changing their habits. Mm -hmm. And yes, of course, if the shops are open, then you're more likely to go, obviously. Uh, but when habits are changing for extended amount of time, uh, you're going to 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 do it more. So you get used to it. Yeah. So you're never mm -hmm. going back to I think what we what we had before. You know, like. The most interesting thing is that the people that are not used to, were not used to be online and shop online, now they have to. Mm. So they need to, you know, they need to learn how to do it, obviously. And that's especially true for, you know, people a little bit older or people that are not used to uh, using technology as much. Um, uh, but yeah, like they, they, they will also learn. And maybe for some things, they will find it also convenient um so i don't think yeah. it's a never a way back to uh what was before so you really see yeah. that people are uh, moving online as well yeah completely so what does that mean that mean that means that your audience is changing um yeah what the, you know your 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 uh, visitors are different people uh, from different backgrounds, not really the ones that you had before. So what, what you knew about your customers doesn't no longer apply because you're, you're dealing with new people from all kinds of different uh, uh, ages and, um, and backgrounds. So yeah, you really need to yeah, take that into account. And of course, there is a lot of, I'm sure, I think a lot of uh, brands do a lot of research on their customer, on their target audience and um, so forth. But now, yeah, you need to kind of review that uh, because uh, you're dealing with a different uh, audience now. So that is something you definitely need to take into account. So I'm going to show you a case, case on that. Um, this is a case, a case that we uh, run uh, uh, with T-Mobile. 
um, was one of our uh, clients uh, together with Kantar TNS um, and uh, Brain Engineers. Uh, Kantar TNS is a research uh, comp um, market research company and uh, Brain Engineers, they uh, do narrow usability research. Um, and here we really focus on helping consumers instead of persuading them, you know? The, that's something that is very common often in the conversion optimization world. We want to uh, shift, make a shift there. So I give you, I'll give you some background. Um, uh, what we were working on is uh, on the product um, that could be purchased online from T-Mobile. It was called the T-Mobile Taos. It is called T-Mobile Taos. There you can, uh, I think the Skowal uh, is in Dutch, uh, uh, like you, you need uh, you have internet, like landline, TV, broadband. Right? Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, so you had to go. You could do this online, and you had to go through a uh, funnel, obviously, when you had to pick and choose your product and da da da, da and continue. Um, but what we saw is that through this process. 47% uh, of the, the visitor were dropping out when deciding which internet speed to pick. Um, and that happened at the first step, which was exactly this one that I just showed you. So you have 50 MB, 100 MB, 200, 500, 750. Um, which one do I pick? I'm not sure. So this was the first indicators that we had to dig deeper. There is something going on here. We really need to uh, research. So uh, this is what we saw from analytics. Um, and this is, uh, we have performed a narrow usability, uh, narrow usability study uh, from brain engineers. Um, this is a shot from the narrow usability research that was performed. Um, and to give you a little bit of background, uh, what brain engineers uh, do, um, um, they use the EEG technology and especially the emotive uh, is a device that you can place on uh, uh, participants on their head. And it will categorize the brainwave in three dimensions. So you have uh, uh, attention, that was uh, is the one in yellow. You have uh, uh, joy, is the one in green. And frustration is the one in red. Um, when going through this process, what we saw is that, uh, let me see if I can show you with my mouse, yeah. Um, there was a peak in frustration here one of the highest through the whole usability research. Um, people were getting annoyed for some reason. <laughs> and uh, one of the reason was that people had no idea what they should pick uh, and they didn't have the information to make that choice. Um, so yes, what was the situation then? Uh, we have uh, performed indeed the uh, analytics I mentioned, the usability I mentioned, frustration was going up. When we ran usability uh, research with the Kantar TNS, we have found out that people just, that they just didn't know. They're like, okay, just tell me which one to pick because I have no idea what I need to pick. I don't know what this 150, 200 MBs means. Um, so uh, I made the main research question was, how can we improve the experience so it's easy for them to select a suitable internet speed essentially. Um, and we had an idea. Uh, we have, uh, after all this research, we have stated the hypothesis. Okay, if we're able to offer help in a form of an advice tool, for example, online, um, we will be able to have uh, uh, more people going through the process. So this was the hypothesis. Um, on the left side, you see the default. So the one I showed you earlier. And on the right hand side, uh, essentially, we have created a, a, a tool where you ask three, we, you um, have three questions. One is, um, uh, um, do, you, do you use email? Um, do you make use of Spotify, Netflix, or so forth? And uh, do you do online gaming? And how many people are in your household? And based on this question, the tool would advise you with this little arrow, this, uh, purp this uh, pink arrow, where, which one you should pick. Um, so that was our hypothesis. So what we've done, we have uh, experimented with it. We set up an A-B test and the results showed that uh, we had a, a positive impact on the checkout. That was our main KPI. That was significant and that was great, wonderful. But the most wonderful thing was that 
there were 60% of the visitors interacting with this tool. And the, the best one of all my favorite is that 87% <laughs> of the people actually follow the advice. So if you give advice, people are, you know, they will, they like that and that's helping. So they, they did follow the advice and um, they also placed a survey um, and 70% of the respondents had a positive uh, experience while using this tool. So that's something very important to us, of course, uh, having seen the, the narrow usability finding. Mm. Um, so what we did again, just like a cherry on the cake, uh, we have uh, performed uh, another uh, usability research, narrow usability research with the new designs, just to see how, how, was, how the, was the frustration going. And what we saw that was very, I uh, say, it gives a lot of satisfaction that actually the joy was going up. So we were really able to uh, make it better for the people that were uh, going through the flow. So what were the next steps from there? This was a, a, a concept that uh, uh, was uh, turned out, to, ooh, something went wrong. Can you still see my screen? Oh, no, it's, um, it's disappeared. Okay, let me see. I think I... Uh... This, uh, you, so you don't see my screen anymore. Let me reshare it. Sorry, of course, technology is always uh, coming through. We're back. We can see it now. Yeah. Wait. Allora. Um, I'll pause share and I will share again. Can you not see it? No. Okay. I will uh, maybe stop share and reshare it once more. And hopefully it will work. Share. The joys. The joys of a live webinar. Yeah, it's so exciting, <laughs> right? <laughs> Can you see it now? This I is how you know it's not pre-recorded. <laughs> <laughs> um, perfect. Okay. Yeah, we can we can see that now. Can you see that? Yes, it work. even I can change lives. Whoa. <laughs> okay, so let's get going. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, yeah, it's uh, not ever boring with the with technology, right? <laughs> okay, so what were the next steps? <clears throat> um, uh, this was a very interesting learning and we love scalable learning. So we applied it also to the marketing uh, strategy. So we added actually a new campaign where we have a advertising um, display advertising where you could actually ask the same question and land with a pre-filled form. And we asked, uh, we had an online survey. So we were asking uh, um, how their experience was so we can keep on improving uh, the, the, the tool. And the last part, of course, we have performed heat maps to see really how people were interact, interacting with the tool. So that, uh, you know, could help us to overcome the barriers that we saw. So actually, our advice conclusion on this is that uh, really helping your customer, listening to them and helping your customer really pays off. Uh, that's, that's much more uh, impactful than um, just implementing all this off the shelf uh, techniques uh, that are out there. So, so that was uh, for the second case. So let's move on to the wrap up. Um, so what was the, con the conclusion of today, the key takeout that you can uh, bring um, home? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, like, well, first of all, uh, because of everything that has been going on in the last uh, few months, what you knew about your customer no longer apply, no, no longer applies. You really need to uh, uh, get back to the drawing board and really uh, get new research in and understand how, who are your customers right now. Um, so that's number one. Uh, number two is really about making a move and shift in your, even in your strategy towards more consumer experience uh, because the transaction, transactional way of uh, optimizing you know, conversion rate uh, doesn't pay off as much as before because of the circumstances which you're living in. And the mm -hmm. third one is really to understand 
ask yourself why, why are we seeing this behavior? And this applies, of course, uh, online, but as well as all offline. So these are the main three takeout. And yeah, well, all I can say, I hope you uh, uh, think about this today. You really need to um, make uh, a better experience for people. Um, Given also the times we're living in is much more important, more important than ever before. So yes, please <laughs> uh, uh, take this with you. And I hope you can uh, implement this in your day-to-day -day, uh, work. Amazing. Thank you so much, Stefania. And um, just to reiterate to everybody um, on the webinar at the moment, we will be sharing this recording with you. Uh, so if you want to look at any of the slides or any of the content that we have covered today, then uh, yeah, that will be sent to you. We have overrun slightly. Um, I, if anybody does want to ask any questions at this point, please uh, just drop them into the chat functionality. Um, and we'll probably have maybe a minute if we're lucky to be able to, to run through those. Or if not, if there's something that comes to you while you're either looking at the recording again or, um, you know, you might have a question for either myself or Stefania, then um, please feel free to um, email myself. You, I think most attendees will have my email because uh, I sent the invitations out to you all. Um, but my email is alice at iquant.com. Um, I can't see any questions um, coming through someone typing somebody's typing i can't see any questions coming through mm -hmm. just at the moment um so i think yeah no we haven't had any okay cool that's fine so we'll probably end the webinar here um but thank you very much for joining thank you very much to stefania for providing a really really interesting and insightful um content there there's a lot of takeaways for me uh, even just working on a marketing team that i've learned along the way um, and for everybody uh, who's on the line, we will be doing another webinar in the next couple of weeks. So please keep your eye peeled. I'll be announcing it probably about next week. It's a good one as well. But thank you very much, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.